Today, I'm going to be ranking every single one of the Chosy Beyblades into a tier list. This is going to be a really long video. So basically how this is going to work is I'm going to be ranking every single one of the Chosy Beyblades based on how competitive their stock combo is. Yep, you heard me right, their stock combo. So that means maybe a layer or maybe a combo has a really good part. For instance, maybe the layer is amazing, but the disc and driver suck. Because the disc and driver suck, that's going to be holding the combo back. So even though the layer might be godly might be the best layer in the game it might not rank that high because the driver and the disc are really bad i'm gonna go chronological order based on how the beyblades were released and i'm gonna be giving my thoughts i'm gonna be basically making the tier list along with you so this video is kind of like my thought process on why certain beyblades are in certain tiers so you guys kind of know so i don't get any comments like hey why was this beyblade in this tier or why was this beyblade in this tier uh we're gonna be making the tier list together let's start it off first beyblade to ever be released chosy valkyrie but not the Chosy Valkyrie you're thinking of. This is Winning Valkyrie. Now, Winning Valkyrie, uh, I'm... He's not my favorite Valkyrie. Now that I think of it, I think Winning Valkyrie's the worst Valkyrie out of all the Valkyries, if I'm being honest, at least corresponding to their generation. For instance, we have Single Layer Valkyrie, which Single Layer Valkyrie was really good for its time. It's one of the best attack single layers. Then we have Victory Valkyrie. Victory Valkyrie was mediocre for its time. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't bad. I feel like the same was for God. Valkyrie. As for Chozy Valkyrie, Chozy Valkyrie is a legend. Chozy Valkyrie is a god. We'll get into that Beyblade later. So yeah, now that I think of it, Winning Valkyrie's the worst Valkyrie to ever be released. And yeah, this Beyblade, it's just not very good. Let me talk about the pros of this Beyblade before I talk about the cons, because there are a lot of cons on this Beyblade. The pros are the layer shape. It's pretty good for attack. It's pretty heavy, and the teeth are really good. So the layer overall, not a bad layer. It's a pretty good layer. Sadly, the cons are the disc and driver they're just not very good the disc is the 12 disc if you guys know 12 is the lightest disc and it also kind of breaks Beyblades it chips Beyblades and that's why most people put frames on their winning Valkyrie because winning Valkyrie has a tendency to just scratch up other Beyblades and it's not pretty so the fact that the 12 disc breaks other Beyblades and it's super light and really bad just makes this Beyblade not very good also the volcanic driver I know a lot of people like the volcanic driver I am just not a fan of the Volcanic Driver. It's very inconsistent, which I guess could be a pro because it's so inconsistent that sometimes it can be the best Beyblade in the game, and sometimes it'll lose to the worst Beyblade in the game. And it's just, most of the time for me, I tend to lose against the worst Beyblade in the game. And uh, with the Volcanic Driver, I just jump out of the stadium. Not a good driver in my opinion. And because of all those cons, I mean the layer's okay, but overall the Beyblade is just not a very good Beyblade. I'm just gonna have to place this Beyblade. It's gonna go D tier, maybe even F tier. This Beyblade is, it's just not a good Beyblade. I don't know how to explain it. It's probably the worst Valkyrie to be released. It is the worst Valkyrie to be released. The the layers okay all the other parts suck all right next Beyblade to be released we have Z Achilles now of course Z Achilles comes in its stock combo and it also comes in the form with its extend chip plus I guess I'll be ranking them both even though the extend chip plus technically isn't a stock combo I'll be ranking that one anyway <laughs> Let's start out with the original Z Achilles with the regular Extend Driver. Where do I rank this Beyblade? Honestly, I don't think Achilles is that much better than Winning Valkyrie. You know how much I bashed Winning Valkyrie? Z Achilles is not that much better. I'm gonna have to put him... I would say Z Achilles is probably in high D tier or low C tier. Just because, again, like Valkyrie, the layer is very good. It's very good for attack. The disc just is not good. The 11 disc, it's a little better than the 12 disc but it's not good. And finally, the Extend Driver, just like the Volcanic Driver, very unpredictable. It might have a little bit more stamina than Volcanic Driver, so that might be why I'm ranking it higher than Chosy Valkyrie, but it's just not a very good driver also. Now, but when you put the Extend Plus Driver on it, or Extend Plus Chip on the driver, it makes it a lot better. I would say with the Extend Plus Chip, Achilles probably goes up at least one rank. So it's probably, I would say the Extend Plus driver with Achilles is probably in 
B tier, just because if you guys know, the Extend Plus chip, when you put that Extend driver, it has crazy life after death, meaning that Achilles with the Extend Plus chip can um, outspin most left spin Beyblades that rely on spin steel, because its life after death is insane. But sadly, the Extend Plus chip, although it is better than the normal Extend driver, when versing same spin Beyblades, Beyblades that I can't steal spin with, that life after death doesn't really matter, it's not really good, so I can't really rank it higher than B tier. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put the regular Z Achilles with the regular Extend driver in C tier, and the Extend plus Achilles in B tier. Next, of course, we have Emperor Fornius. Now, for some reason, I always think Emperor Fornius is really bad, so whenever I use it, it always surprises me, because I'm like, oh wait, this Beyblade, it, it's not that bad, it's actually pretty good. The layer for Emperor Fornius, it is a very heavy layer, it has pretty good teeth, it's pretty round, but I feel like it's one of the parts that kind of holds the Beyblade back. Even though it's very heavy, uh, the way the metal is shaped on the layer, it makes the Beyblade kind of unbalanced, making it lose a little bit of stamina. So that's kind of sad. It's very kind of inconsistent because of that. It's very unstable in the stadium, but that can be a pro because sometimes it's able to get some burst that way. The next part, the Zero Disc. If you guys do know the Zero Disc, it is one of the heaviest discs in the game. Actually, probably not anymore now that we have those crazy GT discs with those crazy like gimmicks and abilities. I think those guys are weighing a lot more than our number disc now, but at least at the time, Zero was the heaviest disc, at least when Emperor Fortnite were released. So it is a very heavy disc, a very good disc. Alright, finally we have the driver. Everyone thought, I remember when it came out, everyone was super hyped the driver. They're like, oh my god, it's like an upgrade version of Atomic, an upgrade version of Orbit. It might even have more life after death than Orbit, but in actuality when we actually got it, it just scraped the stadium and it was actually worse than Orbit. But it is still a pretty good driver, I would say, because it does have a free spinning ball. And because of all that stuff, I'm gonna have to put Emperor Fornius I think he's definitely in B tier. I don't think he's in C tier, so I'm gonna put him... I think he's above uh, Chozy Achilles. He's just a really consistent Beyblade, a really heavy Beyblade. The thing that holds him back from A tier, I would say, is that the driver, it's not the best. It's not bad, like I said before. It's a pretty good driver, but it's not the best driver in the world. And the layer is a little unbalanced. So yeah, I think B tier is a good place to rank this guy. All right, cool, who's next? Uh, next we have Crash Ragnarok. Ooh, Crash Ragnarok. All right, so let's just talk about this Beyblade's parts individually. Let's start with the layer, Crash Ragnarok. And I just have to say, the Crash Ragnarok layer is very disappointing because remember, this Beyblade came after Blaze Ragnarok, the first Ragnarok with really good teeth. Because remember, single layer Ragnarok, horrible teeth. Dual layer Ragnarok, horrible teeth. Finally, we got the god version of Ragnarok, Blaze Ragnarok, and it finally had a good set of teeth. It had really good stamina. It was like an actual competitive Ragnarok. We've never actually had this before. And then in the Cho Z series, they decided to make Crash Ragnarok, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, Crash Ragnarok, it looks kind of cool. It's like a metal version of Ragnarok with metal wings. It better have good teeth just like Blaze Ragnarok. But in actuality, what we got was a Ragnarok with metal, but really bad teeth. So it's uh, it's just not a good combination with the bad teeth that burst very often. Although the layer is very round and has decent stamina, but it doesn't have as much stamina as certain stamina types in the Cho Z series. There's uh, stamina types in the Cho Z series that we'll talk about later that has better stamina than Crash Ragnarok. So the fact that it doesn't have the best stamina in the game and it has really bad teeth. Like for instance, remember Guardian Curvius in the God Layer series? It had horrible teeth, but it had the best stamina in the game. That's kind of made up for the teeth. Sadly, Crash Ragnarok, horrible teeth and bad stamina. Not a, or not bad stamina, but not the best stamina. Not a very good uh, combination. Okay, enough bashing the layer. Let's move on to the next part. Uh, we have the Disc 11 Reach. Now, you guys know my opinion on 11. I talked about it on Z Achilles. 11's not the best disc in the world. I would say 11's probably one of the worst discs in the game. So that doesn't really help Crash Ragnarok's case. Bad layer, bad disc. Now let's talk about the frame. The Reach frame. The Reach frame isn't 
bad. It's kind of like an average frame. It's not amazing. It's not bad. It doesn't hold the Beyblade back, but it doesn't really help the Beyblade. I guess it gives it a little bit more stamina because it gives it a little bit more weight. Finally, we have the driver on Crash Ragnarok, which is the wedge driver. The wedge driver, if you guys don't know, is kind of like a metal sharp driver, except it's kind of unbalanced. It's not the best stamina driver in the game. So yeah, now that I've said all the cons about Crash Ragnarok, you probably think, dang, this Beyblade sucks. It's probably worse than winning Valkyrie is probably like F tier but actually I was kind of being a little harsh on Crash Ragnarok uh, I was talking about all of its cons but it does actually have decent stamina and it has I know I was talking about how the layers like has really bad teeth and it bursts really often but it doesn't burst too often if that makes sense like it doesn't have the best burst resistance in the game, but its burst resistance isn't horrible because of its round design. So I will have to put this Beyblade. It's definitely not B tier material, but I think it's better than Z Achilles. So I'm gonna have to put him above Z Achilles in C tier. Moving on, we have the longness of the Chozy series bloody longness and just like Crash Ragnarok this Beyblade is very disappointing because we came back from Nightmare Longness. I would say debatably, not debatably, it was the best left spin attack type Beyblade in the game. It was sick, it was amazing, there was a crazy amount of metal on this Beyblade. It was so unique because it was the only Beyblade where the layer was fused with the disc and that was insane. It came with one of the best attack type drivers if not the best attack type driver in the game destroy. So when people heard that we were getting a Chozy version of Longinus, they're like, oh my god, it better be as cool as Nightmare Longinus, and it's just, I would say it's not as cool. Now let me just explain the parts individually. Let's start off with the layer. Bloody Longinus' layer, it's not bad, but I will say it's very disappointing compared to Nightmare Longinus at least. You know how Longinus was supposed to be that Beyblade with metal on it, the crazy Beyblade with metal on it? For instance, in the Dual Layer series, we had Lost Longinus, the only dual layer with metal, the only Beyblade with metal on it at the time. And then we got the God series, like Nightmare Longness, with an insane amount of metal on it. So you would think that the series specializing in metal would have a whole lot of metal on the new Longness Beyblade, the Beyblade that also specializes in metal. But that just wasn't the case. Longness actually doesn't even have that much metal on it, which is so weird. The middle dragon in the middle, the golden dragon in the middle, that's not metal either. They didn't even make all the dragons metal, which all the dragons are metal in the other two. <laughs> Evolutions, it's just so confusing. It makes me grr, it makes me just so mad. So, yeah, there's not that much metal on this layer, but it's not the worst layer in the world. It has decent attack power, at least against Left Spin Beyblades. We'll talk about that later. Moving on to the next part, we have the 13 disc, and the 13 disc. Again, like the other two discs we talked about, not the best in the world, but the 13 disc is actually better than the 11 and the 12 disc, much better. I think it's like 20 grams, so it's a lot heavier than those guys, but it's not as heavy as like the 0 and the 10 disc, which is like 5 grams heavier. They're like around 25 grams, but it's not a horrible one. Okay, next we have the Jolt Driver. The Jolt Driver is actually very good. It's a very good attack type driver. I would say... I prefer Extreme over Jolt because for some reason, even though Jolt has a more jaggy uh, kind of design, which means it should have more attack power, in my cases, at least my Jolt, it doesn't have as much attack power as Extreme for some reason, and it also doesn't have as much stamina as Extreme, so it's like, where is it taking from? It doesn't have better attack or stamina than Extreme, so it's just like a watered-down version of Extreme, but it is still a very good attack type driver. Now, where do I rank Bloody Long? I'm going to have to rank. I'm sorry, even though I was talking pretty highly about Bloody Longness's parts, I would have to say it's either B or C tier. If you're wondering why it's B or C tier, it's because a rubber driver just does not work well with the left spin layer. Let me just explain. Basically, you know how the whole thing about left spin Beyblades is that they're able to steal spin? Well, with a rubber driver, rubber has zero life after death, so it is horrible at stealing spin. So whenever Bloody Longness versus a Beyblade such as any right spin Beyblade actually, whenever Bloody Longness versus any right spin Beyblade, uh, all the person with the right spin Beyblade has to do is weak launch his right spin Beyblade, steal spin from Bloody Longness, chances are it's gonna win at life after death because Bloody Longness has a rubber driver which is horrible at life after death. So Bloody Longness basically loses every single matchup to a right spin Beyblade, at least almost every single matchup because of course there are some right spin Beyblades with 
uh, rubber as well, or maybe even worse life after death than the Jolt Driver. But against Lefts and Beyblades, actually, Bloody Longness performs very well. It's able to beat out most, I would say it's able to beat out most Spin Steel Beyblades, for instance. It's able to beat out Geist Fafner. Is that the only Lefts and Beyblades able to beat out? I feel like it kind of ties with Salamander. Salamander has decent defense. Uh, if Chosey's Sprickin's going left spin, which I don't see why anyone would want to verse Longness with a left spin Chosey Sprickin, you can just go right spin. I guess Longness beats that one. So yeah, Longness, it's good against left spin Beyblades, horrible against right spin Beyblades. And because of that, I think I'm going to have to rank it either high C tier or low B tier. I'm going to put in, I think I'm going to put in high C tier. So yeah, Bloody Longness is going to go in high C tier just because in theory the parts sound amazing or maybe not amazing but the parts sound pretty good but in actuality it has a lot of losing matchups okay next we finally have a good beyblade the next beyblade is going to be hell salamander oh my gosh guys hell salamander is such a good beyblade such a good layer such a good combo let's start off with the layer the layer hell salamander of course it is an extremely round layer and it has a lot of metal on it also the teeth are really good and it has a mode change ability although the mode change ability it's not very useful although it doesn't really hinder the beyblade it's not really a hindrance also another thing to note about the layer is that it is a left spin layer which is insane a left spin layer with good teeth round design and a lot of metal think about it in the god series we had arc bahamu and arc bahamu was really good and it was a left spin layer that was round but bad teeth so in chosey we got basically an upgrade version of arc bahamu except with good teeth and a whole lot of metal on it and it is insane all right, the next part we have on Salamander is the 12 disc, and I definitely have to say the 12 disc is definitely holding this combo back. Like I said, with Valkyrie, 12 disc, not the best uh, disc, but that's okay because the layer and the driver make up for it. And next, we have the driver, the operate driver. The operate driver when in attack mode. There's two modes for the operate driver. You can either go in defense mode or attack mode. When in attack mode, Salamander sucks, but in defense mode, Oh my gosh, guys, Salamander is a god in defense mode. You put Salamander in defense mode, it is literally beating most every Beyblade. Because Salamander is amazing at spin steel against right spin Beyblades. Because the Operate Driver, although it's not free spin, it is still a very round defense driver. So it's able to uh, have more life after death and outspin most right spin Beyblades without any free spin parts or life after death. So overall, Salamander can beat most right spin Beyblades. And against left spin Beyblades, Salamander is all also good because it's just a very consistent, very good layer and very good, I wouldn't say good driver. I, it's not an amazing driver, but it's an okay driver, very okay driver. And because of the layer, the layer kind of holds this combo up. The layer is extremely good. The Salamander layer, like I said before, is one of the best layers in the game. So because the layer is so good, it definitely helps this combo out. And because the driver is not trash, it definitely helps this combo out too. So yeah, it has a very good matchup against most right spin Beyblades, has a very good matchup against most left spin Beyblades as well. And because of that, I think Salamander is actually S tier. It is a very good Beyblade, very consistent Beyblade, has really good matchups. I'm gonna say it's our first S tier Beyblade. I I don't want to put it in SS tier, but I think S tier is a good place to put it. Speaking of SS tier, we have our next Beyblade, Archer Hercules. And oh my gosh, guys, you know how I was talking about how Salamander was amazing? Archer Hercules is crazy good. This Beyblade, I don't even know how to explain it. It kind of makes me mad how good this Beyblade is because whenever I'm doing draft battles against Jake, if you guys don't know what draft battles are, we have a draft battle video on this channel. Go check it out. It's basically like where you draft Beyblades and you battle with them. So uh, yeah, whenever we're doing draft battles, the first person always picks Archer Hercules because Archer Hercules is insane. It is so good. Now let me explain each part individually just to tell you how good this Beyblade is. The layer, Archer Hercules layer, extreme stamina, insane stamina. Oh my god, this Beyblade has the best stamina in all the game. It is crazy. And that is because of its gimmick. Its gimmick, it kind of pulls Archer Hercules going to outwards, which gives it better stamina, and also the placement of metal on this Beyblade. The metal is placed on the outside of Archer Hercules, which makes it more aerodynamic, puts the weight towards the outside, and gives it much more stamina. And also, for some reason, Takira Tomi thought, hey, we gave this Beyblade crazy stamina. Why not give this Beyblade good teeth as well? So it has good teeth, 
good stamina, a lot of weight, good like metal placement. The layer is just so OP. It is crazy insane. And mixed with its driver, I'm gonna skip the disc for now because the disc isn't that important, but mixed with its driver, the eternal driver, I would say one of the best stamina drivers in the game. This combo is just crazy. The eternal driver is an upgraded version of the revolve driver, which was already godly when it was released. So the fact that they upgraded the revolve driver and they gave it to the best stamina layer in this game this combo is just so good all right talking about the disc we already talked about this 13 disc like i said before on uh bloody longness not the best disc in the world not the worst disc in the world but the combo overall this is a competitive combo this is a competitive combo right out of the box guys so if you guys want to beat your friends in the beyblade battle go buy archer hercules it's only a booster i think it's only like 15 dollars on ebay so if you guys want the best beyblade in the game definitely get this Beyblade. So yeah, I know, I was talking really highly of this Beyblade. I definitely think it's the best Beyblade in the game. Like I said before, definitely SS tier. Crazy OP Beyblade. Oh my god, the next Beyblade is also really good. Guys, I think I'm gonna have a heart attack because I'm just like, it is so good. that These three Beyblades, they're all extremely good. We have Salamander, we have Archer Hercules, and next we have Revive Phoenix. And Oh, I'm, it's just crazy. It's so hype. Anyway, Revive Phoenix, another one of the really good Chosey Beyblades. Let's just talk about it. Now, the layer Revive Phoenix, it is just so good. The layer's ability is so creative, and it actually works in battle. It's actually pretty good in battle. Layer ability, or its layer gimmick, is that it has an outer ring around it, an armor per se. And when a Beyblade hits it enough, the armor will burst out. And the Beyblade, of course, it has like two bursts in the anime, like the armor burst and then the actual Beyblade burst. So the armor bursts out, and it seems like, at least in my experience, in my testing, whenever the layer kind of bursts off, or the outer armor, armor layer thing burst off the actual layer, it causes the opponent's Beyblade to lose stamina. So it is just really good at making the opponent's Beyblade lose stamina. Another thing that's really good about the armor is that the armor is really heavy, so it makes the whole entire layer very heavy. I think, at least at the time when Revive Phoenix was released, it was the heaviest layer, which, again, really insane. Another really good thing about the Revive Phoenix layer is that it has really good teeth. And the final good thing is that it looks really cool. <laughs> Most importantly, it looks really cool, but I guess that doesn't really uh, help it in the tier list ranking. But in my opinion, I think the Revive Phoenix layer, the color scheme looks really cool. Probably one of my favorite uh, Chosy layers, at least looks wise. Okay, next we have the disc, the 10 disc, and the 10 disc is very good as well. One of the heaviest discs in the game. I think it weighs just as much as zero disc. Like I said earlier in this video, it's probably definitely outclassed by the new Gachi or GT discs, as those things are amazing. But at least at the time the 10 disc was very heavy very good finally we have the friction driver and the friction drivers are right but let me just say i am very disappointed because the friction driver its ability it's like a ball version of the unite driver it's like a ball and then it has rubber around the ball so it's up supposedly supposed to be when you like launch the beyblade at an angle the rubber is supposed to make contact with the stadium and cause the beyblade to go around the stadium like crazy make like attack motions but that doesn't work in real life because the rubber is it's literally impossible to uh, make contact with the stadium floor because of the way the driver's designed. So it's like, why is there rubber in the first place? Just for aesthetics? It's really stupid. I don't like it. But I will say that the friction driver is a pretty decent driver. It's not a bad driver. It's not a good driver. I would say it's an average driver, so it doesn't really hold the combo back. And because the layer is so amazing, and the disc is so amazing, and the driver is not bad, this Beyblade is very good. Very good at stamina, very good at defense. I'm gonna have to put it... It's either... I think it's better than Salamander. I don't think it's... I definitely don't think it's better than Archer Hercules. I think Archer Hercules is just leagues above all the other Beyblades, so I'm gonna have to put... Uh, Revive Phoenix in S tier, probably above Salamander. I don't know, Archer Hercules is just a tier above everyone. It's just such a good Beyblade. Okay, now that we're done with the three amazing, three extremely hyped, three super competitive Beyblades, now it's time to go back to reality with the kind of mediocre, kind of trash Beyblades. Next we have Vice Leopard. And I'm sorry, that was a really bad transition to Vice Leopard because poor Vice Leopard, I was just trashing on it. But I will say, Vice Leopard, 
It's not the best Beyblade. Let me explain why. The layer, very round, and the gimmick doesn't really work. It doesn't really help the layer at all. The layer is very round, and you might say, round layer? That's probably good. That's really good, because for instance, Archer Hercules, Revive Phoenix, and Salamander, three of the best Beyblades, are one of the best Beyblades because their layers are surround. But sadly, that's not the case for uh, Vice Leopard, because Vice Leopard is an attack type. It's not a stamina defense type, which means you don't want a round layer, because then you can't get hard re recoil hits. So that definitely affects uh, Vice Leopard. It's barely able to get any hard recoil hits because its layer is so round. Although it does have pretty good teeth, so I guess that's a pro to the layer. Yay! Okay, next we have the disc. I think the disc is 12 lift, and like I said before, the 12 disc is horrible. It doesn't really help this combo. And the lift frame, the lift frame doesn't help this combo either, because the lift frame, although it's very heavy, it's very low to the ground. It scrapes like crazy. You tilt Vice Leopard at a slight angle, you should expect the lift frame to scrape on the stadium floor and make Vice Leopard lose stamina. So the lift frame and the 12 disc is really bad for this combo. Next we have the driver, the destroy driver. Probably the saving grace of this combo. If it didn't have the destroy driver, this Beyblade would probably be one of the worst Beyblades in the game. Oh wait, it already is one of the worst Beyblades in the game. Uh, the destroy driver is actually very good. It's one of the best attack type drivers in the game, has really good life after death, but like you don't really need life after death. Or like the life after death doesn't really matter on the destroy driver when you have the frame like lift which kind of destroys any life after death that was possible so yeah this Beyblade combo not good because the layers too round to get any attack type hits and the disc and frame just scrape like crazy and the disc is very light the driver not bad but definitely it's not again it's one of the best drivers in the game but it can't really help the combo as a whole because the combo is just really bad and i'm sorry for anyone who really likes uh vice leopard he's just not a good beyblade i'm gonna have to put him i would say he's around winning Valkyrie level. I'm gonna put him below winning Valkyrie because like I said earlier in this video, winning Valkyrie, he's very inconsistent. He can at least win some crazy battles. Like he can win against one of the best Beyblades in the game, but again, he loses to the worst Beyblades in the game. But at least he can beat some of the best players in the game. I feel like Vice Leopard can't beat anyone. So we're gonna put Vice Leopard uh, behind winning Valkyrie in D tier. I don't think it's bad enough to be F tier, but it's just, it's not a good Beyblade. Alright, next we have a pretty decent Beyblade, Buster Excalibur, probably one of the best attack type Beyblades in Chosey, definitely the best attack type Beyblade that we've talked about so far. If you haven't noticed, the attack type Beyblades, there's kind of a trend in Chosey, where they're kind of not the best Vice Leopard winning Valkyrie Body Longness, but uh, Excalibur, at least Buster Excalibur, it is a pretty good Beyblade. Let me explain why. The layer, it has extreme contact points, it's very jaggy, of course it has that one sword, which makes it insane for getting burst and recoil hits. It's kind of the opposite of uh, Vice Leopard, where Vice Leopard's very round, can't get that many recoil hits, but Sir Scalper gets a lot of recoil hits based on its shape. It's kind of like an oval, kind of like the shape of the flash disc from Metal Fight 4D, and that was really good back in the day, so you can expect that this is probably really good nowadays, and it is. It's very good, and plus the um, Sword is made out of metal, so of course it gives it a lot of weight and a lot of attack power. The teeth on this Beyblade isn't bad either. Next, we have the one dash disc, and the one dash disc I won't say is the best disc in the world, but it's not a bad disc. I would say it's a pretty good disc. It's pretty average. Finally, we have the driver, which is sword, and let me just say, I know I say this every time I mention Buster Excalibur, but that is such a lame name for a driver. Like, the layer's name, the layer is a sword, and they're like, let's make it more obvious that this thing is based on a sword, and just name the driver sword. Anyway, the sword driver, it's kind of like a star-shaped piece of metal, kind of like a metal version of Jackie, and Jackie is not the best driver in the world, so you can expect when it's turned into metal, it's not that much better, although it is better than Jackie in my opinion, because it is metal, meaning it has less friction and more attack power and can do a lot of crazy stuff, also it's heavier. So yeah, overall this combo isn't bad. Uh, I would say the disc is average, the driver is average, but the layer is pretty good for attack, probably one of the best uh, attack combos in all of Cho Z, and because of that, I think it's going to be our first A tier. It's like one of the best attack type Beyblades in the game, and attack is, I would say, pretty important for taking down stamina type players such as Archer Hercules, although it's really hard to take down Archer Hercules, because for some reason Takira Tomi was like, give it good stamina, good teeth, good defense. Boom, perfect Beyblade. Next Beyblade. <laughs> 
All right, the next Beyblade we're gonna be talking about is Hazard Curbius, and I'm just so sad because I have this like love for Hazard Curbius. I really like Hazard Curbius for some reason. I just think its design is amazing. Its combo looks really cool, but sadly this Beyblade is not very good. First off, the layer. I feel like the layer, the combo for this Beyblade is amazing. It's the layer that holds it back, which is kind of weird because there's been kind of a trend throughout this tier list that uh, the parts kind of hold back. The layer like the other parts of disc and driver hold back the layer but for this fake blade it's the opposite the layer holds back the parts the parts are actually really good anyway the layer the reason why it's bad is because not because of its shape it's Basically, it's teeth. Its teeth are very bad. The teeth on Hazard Curbius are not very good, and it just bursts like crazy. It bursts more than Crash Ragnarok, for Pete's sake. That's crazy. Like, Crash Ragnarok has horrible teeth. I think uh, Hazard Curbius has better teeth than Crash Ragnarok. It's just Crash Ragnarok's shape is more round, and Hazard Curbius' shape is less round, so I feel like it gets more bursts because of that. And you would think because of Hazard Curbius' uh, ability, its ability is that it's able to absorb attacks that would make it uh, more burst resistant. But that's apparently not the case because it seems like every battle I use has a Curbius and it just bursts, which is so sad. It kind of like copied uh, from the Curbius support Guardian Curbius, except it didn't take the stamina from Guardian Curbius. Although I will say Hazard Curbius aesthetically does look a lot better than Guardian Curbius. All right, let's talk about the rest of its parts. The rest of the parts are actually really good. We have the seven disc, and the seven disc is amazing. One of the best discs in the game. It has really good stamina uh, and it has really good weight. So the disc is really good. The driver, Atomic, is Debatably the best driver in the game, crazy stamina, crazy defense, crazy life after death, an insane driver. So you would think that this combo is really good, but sadly the layer just kind of holds this thing back. And because of that, I think I'm going to have to put Hazard Curbius in D tier. It is actually no, maybe not D tier because it does have a really good matchup against Lepston Beyblades because it's able to steal spin and because of the atomic driver, it's usually able to win at life after death. That definitely, so it's definitely definitely C tier, but because of that, now that I'm thinking of that, does that make it B tier? Should it be B tier? Around uh, Achilles, or Achilles with the Extend Plus chip level? I think it is. Okay, you know what? No, I don't think, I think Achilles is definitely better than Hazard Curbius. I'm gonna have to put Hazard Curbius in high C tier. We're gonna put Hazard Curbius above Bloody Longness. Yeah, that seems right. Okay, so Hazard Curbius is high C tier. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Okay, the next Beyblade on our list is going to have to be Geist Fafner. Now, just like Hazard Curbius, I think Geist Fafner looks amazing. Aesthetically, they're one of the best looking Beyblades, but again, just like Hazard Curbius, it's just not that good. Now, let me explain why it's not that good. Uh, back in the day, Drain Fafner, definitely one of the best layers in all of the god series drain factor was insane the combo was insane and oh yeah guys if you want to see like a tier list for god series Beyblades, if you guys enjoyed this video i can definitely do that in the future anyway uh drain factor was an insane free spin layer back in the day but sadly geist factor and chosi is not the same just because of the shape of geist factor if you guys remember drain factor it was a very round layer for some reason when Takeru Tomi made Geist Fafner, I guess it was to make it look cooler. They kind of gave it a more jaggy design. And a more jaggy design, that's good for attack type Beyblades, but for stamina type Beyblades, not so good because you don't really have that much stamina. So yeah, it's design, it's not very good for stamina, even though being dubbed a stamina type player. Now, of course, the teeth on Geist Fafner isn't bad, but the stamina is pretty bad. Also, another thing worth noting is that it does have a lot more rubber uh, than Drain Fafner, meaning it has more spin steel capabilities. But in my testing, I feel like Drain Fafner uh, has more spin steel capabilities than Geist Fafner, which is kind of weird, even though Geist Fafner has more rubber. Okay, talking about the next part, we have 8 Dash, and 8 Dash is... I would say it's average. It's not the best. I would say 8 dash is actually worse than the actual 8 disc. At least my 8 dash weighs more than my 8 disc, which is kind of weird because 8 dash is supposed to be an upgrade version of the 8 disc, but it weighs less, meaning it's like worse which I just can't comprehend, but I will say that 8 dash does look very cool. It does look a lot cooler than the 8 disc. Finally, we have the Absorb Driver. If you guys have seen any of my videos, you guys know that I hate the Absorb Driver. It's one of my least favorite drivers in the game just because of its one ability, Absorb 
break. And if you guys don't know what absorb break is, basically it's when you launch guys factor in the stadium and for some reason the driver kind of compresses and it makes guys factor move in an attack type motion. And guys factor, you're supposed to be a Sam type Beyblade. You're not supposed to move like that. So when it does move like that, most of the time it just jumps out of the stadium, jumps into one of the pockets and you lose. So yeah, because of all these cons, Geist Fafner is just not very good. But if you do weak launch Geist Fafner, Absorb Break will not work, so you can get some uh, good spin steal and good life after death because Absorb is of course a free spin driver. So because of that, it does do pretty well against Great Spin Beyblades in general. So I will have to put Geist Fafner, it is horrible, it is horrendous against left spin Beyblades, but it does have a pretty good matchup against right spin Beyblades. So I definitely will say it's above C tier. I will have to put it in B tier, definitely not A tier. I think I'm going to put it between, it's either between uh, Emperor Fornius and Achilles or it's above Emperor Fornius. I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him between Achilles and Emperor Fornius. How about that? Yeah, that's probably good ranking. I know I literally just bashed uh Factor and then I just said oh, he I'll put him in B tier. He's not the worst Beyblade in the world. He just has it just makes me so mad because there's little changes that you could do to guys Factor to make him like S tier material. But they didn't do that and because of that he's in B tier and it's just grr. <laughs> Next Beyblade. Alright, so <laughs> that was really cringy. But the next Beyblade we have is Dead Hades. Now, of course, Dead Hades, the owner, at least Hearts, is brothers with Phi, the owner of Revive Phoenix. And because Revive Phoenix is so good, I guess it kind of rubs off on Dead Hades because Dead Hades is also a very good Beyblade. Now, let me just explain why. First off, we have the layer. The Dead Hades layer is very good. It has an extremely large amount of metal on it, and it's actually advertised as the heaviest Chosey layer, which actually isn't the case, it's actually uh, Fi's Beyblade or Vi Phoenix that's the heaviest layer, but whatever. Anyway, because there's so much metal on the layer, it really helps with attack because you can get heavier attacks, it helps with stamina, it basically helps the whole entire layer. Sadly, the layer doesn't have that great of teeth, but that's okay because the driver that it comes with Zephyr Dash is of course a dash driver, meaning it has a tighter spring in the driver, giving it more burst resistance, kind of making up for the bad teeth on Dead Hades, which is actually super surprising because in my opinion, obviously the dash drivers help burst resistance a lot, but I've never seen Dead Hades burst, surprisingly, even though Dead Hades has horrendous teeth. Anyway, moving on to the next part, we have the disc. Dead Hades comes with the disc 11 turn. Now, you know my opinion on 11. 11 sucks. I don't know why Takeru Tomi keeps on giving us these horrible discs. 11 and 12, we don't want these Takeru Tomi. Stop releasing them. It seems like every new Beyblade, it either comes with 11 or 12 now. And it's just like, no, I don't like it. Stop doing that. Anyway, so yeah, 11, horrible. Let's talk about the frame on this disc, though. Turn. Turn, it's not the worst frame in the world, but I won't say it's the best frame either. It's kind of just an average frame. Kind of something you just put on to like kind of put on weight on the Beyblade, I guess. Anyway, its ability is that it's reversible. You can put it on one way then flip it over, put it on another way. And honestly, it's not that great. The reversible gimmick, it doesn't really, I mean, it does stuff, but it's like so minute. That's like, why would you even reverse? It doesn't really make sense. I think it changes contact points, but when does the disc ever really make contact? All right, next part, we have the Zephyr Driver. Now, the Zephyr Driver, uh, of course, like I said before, it's Zephyr Dash, so it has a tighter spring, so that definitely helps the combo. Zephyr as a whole is a very good driver. It's one of my favorite drivers in the game. Um, what I like about it is that it has attack power, but it's controlled attack power. It's not something like extreme where it's kind of hard to control. It's very controlled, very easy to control. Another thing that I really like about the Zephyr Driver is that it also has really good stamina. It has crazy stamina enough for the amount of attack that's able to perform. So for instance, you're attacking the Beyblade, the Stamina type Beyblade, and because you're attacking him, the Stamina type's losing stamina, but because you have the Zephyr Driver, you're not losing as much stamina. So it's really good. I feel like Dead Hades is probably one of the best Beyblades against right spin Beyblades. It does really well against right spin Beyblades. Against left spin Beyblades, I will say it doesn't do as well due to spin steal and all that, and Zephyr Dash not really having as much uh, life after death as most drivers because it's so like um 
What's the word? It's so narrow, I guess. Anyway, uh, yeah, overall, Dead Hades, very good Beyblade. The layer works really well with the driver, and the disc might not be the best disc in the world, but again, it's it's doable. So yeah, overall, where would I put Dead Hades? I think Dead Hades is an extremely good Beyblade. I, it's either low S tier, I would say, or high A tier. It's a really good Beyblade due to its uh, weight, and also Dash Driver having like good attack power, not good attack power, but decent attack power power and also good stamina. So yeah, it's one of the best balance types I would say. It's definitely a very balanced Beyblade because it doesn't have crazy attack, but it doesn't have crazy defense, it doesn't have crazy stamina, but it's kind of like good in all those qualities. So I'm gonna have to put him in, we'll put him in low S tier for now, and then maybe later in the video if we find like other Beyblades, maybe I'll bring Dead Hades down to A tier, but I'm thinking low S tier is pretty good for now. All right, moving on to the next Beyblade, we have Chosey Valkyrie. And Chosey Valkyrie is definitely, in my opinion, probably the best attack type Beyblade in all of Beyblade vs. Chosey. So yeah, let me explain why. Basically, the layer for Chosey Valkyrie, an insane layer that is, is actually extremely heavy, even though it doesn't have that much metal on it, at least as much metal as other Chosey Beyblades. It's very heavy. It also has crazy attack power for some reason, maybe because it's so thick, and maybe because it's so big, it just has crazy attack power. Another thing that's really amazing about Chosey Valkyrie Slayer is that it has the unburstable gimmick. It is the first Beyblade to have this gimmick of being unburstable. Well, I guess besides Shadow or a Chalcom, but that guy wasn't really unburstable. Chosey Valkyrie is basically the first Beyblade to really have a working gimmick of being unburstable. Anyway, how its gimmick works is that it has wings on the layer. When you launch the Beyblade hard enough, those wings will come out and make the Beyblade unburstable. So it kind of like takes away a losing factor to Chosey Valkyrie. Can't lose by burst unless you, of course, you don't launch it hard enough. Okay, the next part we have is the Zenith Disc, and the Zenith Disc is very good, I would say. The Zenith Disc, it's like a regular disc, except it has plastic and rubber on it, and the rubber helps, um, aid in attack by aiding in friction and able to burst other people's Beyblades. It's kind of like the predecessor to the discs that would be coming in the new GT series. It's like a disc with a gimmick. Its gimmick is of course rubber like I explained before. It's also decently heavy so it can definitely keep up with most of the number discs at the time of Cho Z. Moving on to the final part. The final part is the Evolution Driver and what I have to say about the Evolution Driver is it's not the best attack type driver in the world but I really like it. It's like for instance, you remember the variable driver on Victory Valkyrie, how that was like very hard to control. The Evolution driver is kind of a more controlled version of that driver. So it might not be as crazy as extreme or as crazy as variable, but it is very consistent and very nice to use in my opinion. Probably one of my favorite attack type drivers. So yeah, because Chosey Valkyrie has an insane layer, a really good disc, and a pretty good driver. It just works very well. And surprisingly, it's one of the only Beyblades. Okay, this is why I'm going to rank it so high on this tier list. It's because it's one of the only Beyblades that's able to beat Archer Hercules consistently. With a uh, Chosey Valkyrie, you're able to burst Archer Hercules pretty consistently. The best Beyblade in the game. It's basically one of its only counters in the game. This is Archer Hercules' only counter. So yeah, because it's Archer Hercules' only counter, and because it's an extremely good attack type, I think, I think this guy's S tier. I'm going to put him... I think I'm gonna put him above dead Hades. He's gonna go above dead Hades in S tier. Also, a reason why he might not be SS tier or higher in S tier is just because he doesn't do very well against left spin uh, Beyblades. Beyblades that can steal spin just because the evolution driver, of course, is made of rubber, so it's not gonna have that much life after death. But of course, against right spin Beyblades, Chosey Valkyrie just destroys. Okay, enough talking about good Beyblades, I guess, because now we're on to some bad Beyblades, yay! Next we have Orb Aegis, and Orb Aegis, like I said at the beginning of the video, there might be some parts that are like super good, super competitive by themselves, but mixed with the combo, it's not that great. That is Orb Aegis in a nutshell. The layer Orb Aegis is extremely good, has so much stamina, really good teeth, really good shape, it's like a circle, it's a complete circle, super good teeth. The ability, the gimmick, it doesn't really do 
much, but doesn't really hinder the Beyblade. Overall, the layer is godly. Next, we have the disc, the Omega Disc. And let me just say, the Omega Disc is one of the best discs in the game, just because it has crazy stamina. The stamina on this disc is insane. I think it's actually the best disc in all of the game for stamina, and that's just because all the weight is towards the outside, giving it more stamina. It's basically Archer Hercules in a disc form. It is insane. But sadly for this Beyblade, the driver completely holds it back. The driver is Quest. And Quest is the worst driver in the game, in my opinion. It is horrible. There's no reason why you should be using the Quest driver. It is horrendous. Basically, what the Quest driver is, it's a suction cup driver. So it suction cups to the stadium, and it's free spin. So it doesn't have any attack power, because it literally doesn't move. It's suction cup to the stadium. It doesn't have any stamina, because the suction cup kind of suction cups to the stadium is made out of rubber, and kind of steals stamina from the Beyblade. So this Beyblade has horrible stamina and horrible attack power literally if i would put if i were to put it on a one to ten scale both those uh attack and stamina would be ones it is horrible but i will say it does have pretty good defense would but if you're throwing away all attack and all stamina just to get good defense it's just not worth it there's beyblade with better defense actually so yeah it basically throws away all attack attributes all stamina attributes just for that one defense attribute and it just doesn't work out well it is just a very bad driver and sadly when it's mixed with a really good layer and a really good disc it just really holds back this combo it does horrible against like every single Beyblade. I don't think Orbe just has one good matchup. Think about it. It loses to left spin Beyblades because um, obviously the quest driver does have some life after death because it's free spin, but I feel like because of the suction cup and the rubber ability of the quest driver, it doesn't have that much life after death. Maybe even less life after death than like rubber driver. So I feel like even Bloody Longinus can be Orb Aegis in life after death, which is really sad. Orb Aegis also loses to attack type Beyblades because even though it has crazy defense, it actually has less stamina than most attack type Beyblades. So most attack type Beyblades, Beyblades with no stamina at all can usually just be Orb Aegis because it has more stamina than Orb Aegis. That's how bad Orb Aegis is at stamina. Its stamina is literally non-existent. And finally, against stamina type Beyblades, it's the same case. It has no attack power, so it can't even burst stamina type Beyblades. And then it loses to spin because it has no stamina. Overall, this Beyblade, this combo just sucks. It's really sad because the layer and the disc are really good. They are both really competitive. But sadly, the driver definitely holds it back. And I'm gonna say that this is gonna be our first F tier Beyblade just because it has no pros. There's no pros to this Beyblade. It loses like every single matchup. I've never had a matchup where I've, where I've gone in with Orb Aegis being like, all right, I can win this, guys. It's like every time I use Orb Aegis, I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna throw away this battle. Now, of course, it's really fun to use. It's really cool. It's really different with the quest driver, but it is just not good. You do not expect to win with the quest driver. It is just a really bad driver. Okay, enough ranting about Orb Aegis. Let's move on to the next Beyblade. The next Beyblade we have is my favorite Beyblade of all of Cho Z. Cho Z Spriggan. Oh my gosh, I love this Beyblade so much. Anyway, let me just talk about the parts real quick. The Cho Z Spriggan layer, amazing layer, extremely good layer. I actually think, I, I mean, of course, this is my opinion, and I might be a little biased because I really do like the Spriggan layers and the Spriggan line in general. But I think Cho Z Spriggan is the best layer in all of Cho Z, at least competitive wise. Let me just explain why. The layer is extremely round, meaning it has extreme stamina, but it it also has some points of contact. I mean, it can have some attack power as well. Again, just like Chosy Valkyrie, it has the unburstable gimmick, which means the Beyblade becomes unburstable. You cannot burst this Beyblade, which makes it extremely OP. But wait, there's more. Chosy Spriggan also has the ability to change its spin direction. It can either go left spin or right spin, and that is extremely handy because when bursting right spin Beyblade, you can choose, hmm, do I want to battle this right spin Beyblade? Do I think I can beat this right spin Beyblade in stamina? And if you don't think you can beat this right spin Beyblade in stamina, then you go to left spin and you're like, maybe I can beat it at life after death. It just gives Chosy Spriggan a lot more options than every other Beyblade. For instance, during this tier list, a lot of Beyblades are kind of held back in the tier just because they have horrible matchups against opposite spin Beyblades, or maybe they have horrible matchups against same spin Beyblades. 
uh, Chosey Spriggan does not have that uh, disadvantage because of course it can change its spin direction and that is extremely handy. So because Chosey Spriggan's layer is both dual rotation, unburstable, and crazy round design. Wait, did I mention that has amazing teeth? It has amazing teeth. So because of all those factors, it is definitely, in my opinion, the best Chosey layer. Now let's move on to the next part, the zero disc and the wall frame. Now the zero disc, again, like I explained earlier in this video, with other uh, combos with the zero disc, it's one of the heaviest discs in the game. It is very good. The wall frame though, the wall frame, oh my goodness, I'm so sad because the wall frame is what's keeping this Beyblade from being the best Beyblade in all of the game. This Beyblade could definitely be Archer Hercules if it wasn't for the wall frame. Now the wall frame, it's very good with the bearing driver, don't get me wrong. The wall frame is extremely competitive with the bearing driver. For some reason, mixed with the bearing driver, it's able to have extreme life after death, but mixed with any other driver, the wall frame is just very bad. It scrapes the stadium. You tilt Spriggan at a slight angle and it'll scrape the stadium like crazy and lose all stamina. I would say it's even worse than the lift frame. So yeah, the wall frame definitely holds this combo back. It definitely holds the layer and the disc to extremely competitive parts back from being SS tier. All right, next, of course, we have the driver Zeta Dash. Now, of course, it's a dash driver, meaning it has a tighter spring, but it doesn't really help because the Chosey Spriggan layer is already unburstable with amazing teeth, so you don't really need a dash driver. Anyway, Zeta, we've seen Zeta before on Spriggan Requiem, and it's not the best driver in the world, but it is a driver that comes in handy because of its ability. It's able to change between types. It can be a defense type, an attack type, and a stamina type, and that really helps against other Beyblades, just like the spin direction based on your opponent combo you can change to attack mode or maybe attack mode's not the best and you can change to defense mode and stamina mode and it's just very useful for uh, that type of thing although I will say the modes are not that great for attack mode you have the quake driver not the best for stamina mode you have the fusion driver pretty bad I don't even know why fusions for stamina mode when fusions a balance type driver and finally for defense mode you have the massive driver which is an all right defense driver so yeah overall the driver modes aren't the best but the fact that you can change between them based on your situation is very useful and yeah overall it's ugh, Chosey Spriggan, amazing layer, amazing disc, pretty decent driver, but the frame, oh my gosh, the frame definitely holds this Beyblade back. I feel like the frame is really bad because the main thing that was great about Spriggan Requiem is that it was able to steal spin, and that made Spriggan Requiem crazy because it could steal spin from any Beyblade because it could switch from left to right direction. And of course, Chosey Spriggan can also steal spin from any Beyblade because it also has the same ability, although the wall frame has horrible life after death, making spin steel basically useless. So yeah, that's, it's really, the wall frame really sucks. Also, when it's first thing, other spin combos, of course, the wall frame the wall frame scrapes a lot, so that also makes it really bad. But I will say that even though the wall frame's really bad, the layer is still very good, the driver is still decent, and the disc is still decent, and also the combo as whole is very heavy. So I won't say this is even near the top of the list for Beyblade vs. Chosey, but it is not a bad Beyblade. I'm gonna have to put him, I think Chosey Spriggan's probably above uh, Emperor Fornius in B tier. I'm gonna put him in B tier. Okay, so next on the list we have, of course, Chosey Achilles, the evolution of Z Achilles. Z Achilles actually got like a crazy amount of evolutions in the series. Think about it. First, we started off with the normal Z Achilles, and then it got the Extend Plus chip, and finally it evolved to Chosey Achilles. Now, let's talk about Chosey Achilles real quick. Honestly, I think Chosey Achilles is a watered down version of Chosey Valkyrie, and here's why. I feel like the layer does the same exact thing as Chosey Valkyrie, of course being a Chosey Prefix Beyblade. It has the unburstable gimmick, so it has the unburstable ability just like Chosey Valkyrie, except I feel like the shape of the layer is just not as good as the shape of Chosey Valkyrie, and it doesn't have as much attack power. Next, we have the disc, which I actually think the disc is better than Chosey Valkyrie. The disc it comes with is the double O disc, which is actually the heaviest disc in the game, at least at the time that uh, Chosey Achilles was released, giving it a lot of attack power. 
finally we have the driver, and I feel like the driver really holds this Beyblade back. And don't get me wrong, it's not a bad driver, but compared to a Beyblade like Chosey Valkyrie, I'm really comparing this Beyblade to Chosey Valkyrie because I see a lot of similarities. I feel like these Beyblades are very similar uh, based on like their performance-wise, they perform very similar, and they're used in a very similar way. So yeah, Chosey Achilles, it's driver, the uh, dimension driver, I feel like it's not that great, it doesn't have that great of stamina, and its attack power is a bit hard to control, but don't get me wrong, it's not like crazy hard to control, it's not like Volcanic Driver, but it's not as easy to control as Evolution, and because of that I'm gonna have to rank him lower than Chosey Valkyrie, I think Chosey Achilles is probably high A tier, it still has really good attack power, uh, the Dimension Driver isn't the worst driver in the world, like I said before, it can be controlled, it's just a little hard to control, and yeah, so overall I just see Chosey Achilles as a watered down version of Chosey Valkyrie. He's gonna go above, I would say he's above Excalibur, and we're gonna put him in A tier. Okay, so the next Beyblade we're gonna be talking about is Air Knight. Now, Air Knight is a stamina type Beyblade, and I will say Air Knight, just as Chosey Achilles was a watered down version of Chosey Valkyrie, I feel like Air Knight is a very much watered down version of Archer Hercules. It's good, but it's definitely nowhere near Archer Hercules. It kind of performs the same niches as Archer Hercules. It's used in a similar way that Archer Hercules is. It's just, it's a lot worse than Archer Hercules. Now let me just explain the parts and why I think this. First off, the layer, Air Knight. Air Knight, its layer is like uh, the Bananas layer, Maximum Grudas layer, except it has teeth, so it definitely has a lot more burst resistance. Sadly, unlike Maximum Gruda, which has a crazy amount of stamina, Air Knight's layer, its shape at least, is not exactly the same, meaning it has less stamina than Maximum Gruda, but more burst resistance. Which which one do you want, guys? More burst resistance, but less stamina, or uh, less burst resistance and more stamina. Honestly, I, I'd probably go with more burst resistance, just because I'm a safe guy, I don't like risking stuff. Okay, moving on to the next part, it's 12 Expand. Again, the 12 disc, I have no idea why Takeratomi keeps releasing the 12 disc. It is really bad, I just don't want to use it anymore. Just get out of here. This is like, they literally released this thing so many times. Uh, let me just list all the Beyblades that have it. First off, we have Winning Valkyrie, then we have Salamander, then we have Vice Leopard, and now we have Air Knight. It's the fourth Beyblade to be released with this garbage disc. It is just horrible. I hate it. It's super light. There's like no use. It's, I think it's the worst disc in the game. Okay, next we have the frame, the expand frame. Now the expand frame, it's not a bad frame. I think it's actually a pretty good frame. It's pretty round, giving it decent life after death. So overall, a pretty decent frame. It's a pretty good frame. Okay, finally, we have the Eternal Driver, and of course, just like I said on Archer Hercules, Eternal is a very good driver, it's very good on Air Knight. Now here's something good and bad about Air Knight at the same time, Air Knight is extremely consistent, it's kind of the opposite of winning Valkyrie, you can always count on Air Knight to beat Beyblades below it, but you can never count on Air Knight to like spontaneously beat Beyblades above it, or Beyblades with a losing matchup, it'll never beat Beyblades with a losing matchup, but it will always beat Beyblades with a winning matchup. It is extremely consistent, a very consistent Beyblade, and the reason for that is because there's only really one way to launch Air Knight. You just launch him in the stadium, and he goes straight in the middle of the stadium. He doesn't do anything else, he doesn't do anything crazy, he always does what's expected. Now, that's of course a good thing, because that means it'll always do what you expect, but again, it's a bad thing, because maybe you're like, oh dang, I really need Air Knight to win this one match, and it won't win that one match, because maybe it has a bad matchup to it. So, uh, yeah, overall, Air Knight, it's a very consistent consistent Beyblade, a very good Beyblade. I will say it is a lot worse than Archer Hercules just because it doesn't have as much stamina, so it's like a watered down version of Archer Hercules in my opinion. I'm gonna have to put this guy... I will say... I'm gonna put him... Uh, between Emperor Fornius and Chosey Spurgeon, just because it is a very solid Beyblade, very consistent Beyblade, very good Beyblade. Okay, now we're finally at the end of the flip a -rooney tier list. My throat hurts so much. I've been talking for too long. Guys, you don't understand. I've been talking for like an hour straight. Yeah, I mean, the video might not be an hour long because I'm gonna do a bunch of cuts while I'm editing, but I've been talking for an hour straight. Anyway, the last Beyblade we're gonna be talking about is, of course, Dead. Phoenix. Now, where do I rank Dead Phoenix? I think Dead Phoenix is actually a very good Beyblade. It's a very good Beyblade, and let me explain why. Just like Revive Phoenix, it has 
the uh, outer armor gimmick where the armor will come off when it's hit hard enough and make the opponent lose stamina so yeah that's of course really good but the downside to dead phoenix compared to revived phoenix is that dead phoenix at least the inner part of the layer doesn't have any metal at all making the layer way less than revived phoenix so i do think revived phoenix's layer is better than dead phoenix's but i will say dead phoenix's parts are amazing oh my gosh these parts are crazy so the parts it comes with is the zero disc of course the heaviest disc in the game or at least one of the heaviest discs in the game and then it also comes with the atomic driver and like i explained on hazard kirby's the atomic driver is probably the best driver in the game extreme stamina extreme defense extreme life after death so because of its parts i think I don't know. I feel like it's better than Revive Phoenix, but maybe worse. Definitely worse than Archer Hercules. Uh, I don't know if I should put it in SS tier or S tier. I'm gonna put an SS tier just so Archer Hercules has like kind of a buddy. So yeah, that was my whole Beyblade tier list. As for some Beyblades that I did include on this list, such as Shining on Materials, the reason I didn't include Shining on Materials is because I don't have Shining on Materials, so I don't know how it would compare to all these Beyblades. As for Shadow on Materials, that's kind of like an event Beyblade, so I didn't want to to include it but if I did include it I would say shadow on materials would be probably low B tier high C tier just because it struggles with the same thing as vice leopard it's a very round layer for being an attack type but unlike vice leopard it doesn't have the lift disc and it has a very good disc actually it comes with a zero disc and a very good driver the extreme dash driver so I think it would be it'd probably be around B tier I would say so shadow on materials somewhere around B tier and finally the last Beyblade that I didn't really talk about is Chosey Eclipse now I didn't talk about Chosey Eclipse is just because Chosey Eclipse doesn't really have a stock combo and this is like a kind of stock combo tier list. If I were to rank the layer alone, I would probably rank the layer around, I would say somewhere around C tier. The layer's just not very good. It's very unbalanced. It doesn't really have that much attack power. Very bad layer. In my opinion, at least compared to all the other layers, it's not the worst layer, but it's, it's not the best layer, definitely. Okay, so yeah, that was my Beyblade vs. Chosey tier list. If you guys want to see more tier lists in the future, Maybe I'll do one on the god layers, maybe I'll do one on the dual layers, maybe I'll do one on like layers in general. If you guys want to see another tier list, leave a like, and please leave a like because this video took really long to make and my throat really hurts. Anyway, see you guys later, have a nice day, left burst out.